Hi, my name's Johnny and today we are taking a look at the brand new Harley Benton MJB4, what? We are taking a look at the brand new Harley Benton MV4, we are taking a look at the brand new MV4JB Goto from Harley Benton. Harley Benton does it again. Now I remember being in school when you couldn't get a good base for under like 400 pounds at the time. Now you can get insanely good value guitars for under 200 pounds as this base proves. And Harley Benton have played a huge role in this surge of uh, quality in affordable instruments. For those that don't know, Harley Benton are Toman's own brands. I've reviewed several of their bases on this channel and I've always been incredibly impressed with the value for money and quality that you can get. I'll put a link in the description to Harley Benton's website where you can go and check out all of their other guitars as well as this brand new one here. Before we start this video, I just wanna say a huge thanks to Harley Benton for hooking me up with this guitar. All of the clips and things that I say and things that you're gonna hear is all gonna come from me and my opinion alone. I'm not holding back. Now if when watching this video you sit back and think, huh, I like what I see, then make sure you hit subscribe. Yeah, and if you like what you see about the guitar, make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out how you, yes you, there watching, could win this bass. So what makes this bass any different to any other Harley Benton you can get? One thing that is often not so good, certainly the weaker thing about more affordable guitars is often the hardware. That's normally the first thing that gets cheaped out on. And this is something that Harley Benton have taken on board and, uh, and fixed essentially on their guitars. Certainly the machine heads and stuff is always a bit of a weak point. So now we have got these amazing Goto tuners and look how clean this looks first of all. Oh my goodness. And they just work so well. If we're starting at the top of the bass, we have to give these tuners credit. They feel like worlds apart from any of the quality that you get on other Harley Bentons and Squires in the same price range. These are premium uh, tuners that just feel so nice in your hands and they hold the tuning super, super well. Now at first I didn't think that these tuners looked great on this like clearly vintage looking bass, you know, to have these modern machine heads. I thought, oh, not sure how good that's going to look. But actually in person, I've completely forgotten about that. And yeah, I, I don't have an issue with it at all. But I can understand why people wouldn't like these compared to your classic Clover tuners. Of course, we have got the matching headstock on here, which looks lovely with this silver logo and the string tree here, which holds down three of the four strings. And the nuts actually made out of graphite, which is insane for this price range. We've got a D-shaped neck. And I really like the feel of a D in my hand. Compared to a C-shape, a D-shape is a bit more rounded and pokes out a bit more and actually fits really naturally in your hand. So if you don't really like a super skinny jazz neck, this is gonna be really comfy for you. But at the same time, if you don't like a fat P-bass neck, this, isn't miles apart from a jazz. It's kind of in between a P bass and a jazz bass. And it's, yeah, it's a really smart feeling neck. We've got a caramelized, caramelized maple neck. Not quite roasted. It's not quite normal maple. It's caramelized. Um, I don't know what the process is, or what they do here. When I first read it, I was a bit like, did they just 
not leave it in the oven long enough. <laughs> oh no, we've made a mistake with these roasted maple necks. We could tell the boss we messed up or caramelized maple. <laughs> caramelized maple isn't something I've seen before, but let me know in the comments if there are other bases out there that have got this on because it's cool. No issues with fret edges moving up. Maybe a tiny bit pokey at the top, but certainly for this price, that is a really, really good job. Now, when I did my initial unboxing, I did think the nuts was a little bit sharp, but I haven't actually thought about that since. I thought it would might bother me a little bit, but since I've unboxed it, I've not actually noticed that at all. Moving on up, we have an amazing looking taut pit guard. I'm so proud of Harley Benton. It's so cool to see how far they've come over the past five years. I remember when, you know, the taut pit cards were like, JPEG and looked really naff. Compared to now, they're looking so much nicer. Brass saddles on the bridge is a really nice touch for this price range and it's got some nice feeling knobs. Classic jazz bass pickup setup. We've got two single coils that are Roswell JBA Alnico 5 pickups. And we'll talk more about the sound of those after we've had a listen. Now, one extra thing about this bass, which I wasn't expecting, is the tug bar here. They, they put a tug bar on here. A tug bar is basically where you would hold your fingers here and then play with your thumb. For me, this isn't something that I really use at all. Um, I'd be more inclined to move it up to the top and have a thumb rest, um, but I think it's a really nice addition nonetheless. So we can't go any further without talking about the color. An affordable shell pink jazz bass. For all those flea lovers out there, this is gonna be so, so good for an affordable flea bass option. This bass also comes in a really cool Daphne blue or black and a burgundy mist. The body is alder and I wanna talk a bit more about that later on. First of all, let's have a uh, little word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Meters by Ashdown Engineering. Yep, that's Ashdown the Bass Amp Company. The Novo One Pro Reference headphones use 50 millimeter dynamic drivers to deliver an accurate response across the whole audio spectrum. Despite being more affordable options, they are super comfy and just feel great in your hands uh, for those long studio sessions. In the carry case, we've got this three meter cable with a jack on the end as well, which is just so good, so handy to use. Head over to ashdown.com to find out more. Now let's take a listen to what these pickups can do. All of the sound clips you're gonna be hearing are running through the Line 6 HX Stomp using the Galleon Kruger head running into the Ampeg 8x10 SVT cab. <laughs>
Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a jazz bass, all right. So I'd be really interested to hear what you think about the sound of this bass. It's, it's a good sounding bass. It's it's a jazz bass. It's nothing. Oh, yeah. It it doesn't grab you. It's not uh, mind blowing. But maybe I'm just a bit numb. They've set the bar so high for themselves that it's getting hard to get over. One thing I think this bass could do with out of the box is just changing the strings straight away. I think the stock ones, they're meant to be Diodarios, but I don't feel like they, they don't quite feel right with the bass, I don't think. So I'd recommend changing these out as soon as you get it. Don't be put off straight away if you don't like the feel or the sound of it. I think it would really benefit from your own setup uh, using your kind of preferred strings. Seeing a lot of the comments from my unboxing, a lot of people are asking, what is the weight of this bass? Uh, and because that has also been a problem of Harley Benton's in the past especially when comparing it to their Squire counterparts. The Squires are often a lot lighter, and that can be a real backbreaker, I mean deal breaker for people. So this bass weighs in at 10 pounds. It's heavier than my five string Squire that's up there. I think that'll really put some people off. And it's something I really think that they should have addressed with these if they wanted to offer a slightly more premium one that there's, you know, they've improved on all elements. I think the weight is definitely a factor that that should have been taken into account uh, because I know that some people aren't going to like that. So when they released this bass, it kind of rubbed me up the wrong way a little bit 
because a couple of days before, they released some new colours of their more affordable jazz basses, one of which being shell pink with a mint pick guard. I feel really sorry for the people that rushed out and pre-ordered or bought those ones, and then like a week later, they announced these? Like, ah, oh, that, I don't know, it, it kind of rubbed me up the wrong way a little bit. I was like, ah, oh, come on guys, it could, could have done them at the same time, then people wouldn't have been disappointed with the one they've just ordered. Um, I don't know, it seemed like a weird decision. I get why they would space things out, but especially when you're releasing something of the same colour and one that looks a lot better than the other one, I don't know. I, I feel like they should have done them at those at the same time to avoid disappointing customers. Also, I kind of wish that this was a Jaguar base. <laughs> It's not something that they've done yet, so I think this would have been the perfect chance to do that. So the lovely folks at Harley Benton have kindly said that I can give away this base. And how to enter is so simple. Just head over to my Instagram page, at Johnny Dibble, like the post related to this base and the giveaway, tag three friends in the comments, and share the post on your story. This competition is going to be exclusive for everybody in the UK and please, please don't fall for these fake accounts. I'll be choosing the winner at random and announcing it on my story on this date. Good luck. Leave a comment down below saying what base do you think Harley Benson should release next. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.